week. Many of you are doing travel planning or perhaps menu planning or maybe both, trying to figure out how to get your menu items to travel to wherever you're having Thanksgiving. It's a week where you'll probably be hearing a lot about gratitude, appropriately so. It's a wonderful thing to have a holiday which reminds us to be grateful for the blessings that we received. Thanksgiving is not a Christian holiday. Folks celebrate Thanksgiving from any faith tradition or people who have no faith tradition at all. But I believe that the blessings we receive come from God. And the greatest blessing of all is the blessing of Jesus Christ. So, not surprisingly, you can find a lot of support for that in the Bible. So as we finish up our series on Philippians 4 and talk about gratitude, I want to focus on that today. Philippians 4, 11 through 12 is a passage you have almost certainly heard before. Paul is writing from prison to the believers at Philippi and says, not that I'm referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little. I know what it is to have much. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty, and of being in need. Learning to be content with whatever I have is a pretty good definition of gratitude. But how we get there is a little bit more complicated. I had a wonderful experience in the week before this one. I was at Gilchrist Retreat Center in Three Rivers, Michigan. I had not been there before. I was not going for any structured program or a certain activity, although I did have a friend who was coming up the day after I got there. I don't want to imply that I was roughing it. This was nothing like wilderness camping, which I know some of you have done. I was in a house that had running water and heat, which was awesome. But there were some things which made it a little bit of a deal. I had to bring all of my own food, and I had to hike in anything that I was taking. And that meant I actually had to think through how much I would need including how much I wanted to have to share with my friend when she got there the next day. So I had to think through what is enough, like how many books do I take, how many pairs of shoes, what kind of food. And of course, I was thinking about this passage from Philippians as I was reading and praying and tramping around through the woods. And here's what I realized. Maybe this is something that you have already figured out or have known for a long time. I hope so. The enemy of gratitude, the thing which keeps us from being content, is not having little or being hungry. The enemy of gratitude is taking things for granted. Now, I couldn't find a single word that summed up this quality, but here's what taking things for granted. Here's a dictionary de definition. To take things for granted is to expect something always to happen or exist in a particular way. To take something for granted is failure to appreciate something or someone as a result of over-familiarity. To take things for granted is to give little attention to or to underestimate the value of something or someone. And what I realized is that the people who are least likely to be grateful for food are not those who are in need. The people to be least grateful for food are folks who have never been hungry. Those are the folks who sit around a Thanksgiving table loaded with food and say, I think the turkey's a little dry this year. 
I like mom's pie crust better. Although I have limited experience in this, in my experience, people who are hungry don't complain about their food, they're just grateful to have something to eat. Of course, we take things for granted every day. It's hard to wake up amazed every morning because the heat's on in the house or that somebody is picking up our trash for us. But let me tell you, last Sunday morning when the McFadden family did not have heat in the house and it was 48 degrees on Sunday morning, we were pretty grateful when that, fur when that furnace repair guy showed up. And if you have to carry your own trash out a quarter of a mile to be recycled or composted, makes you think differently about what you use and what you discard without thinking about it. I believe that caring for creation is directly related to gratitude about what we have been given and what we take for granted and expect that it will always be the way that it has been. Of course, there is a theological element to gratitude, and we don't have to look very far to find it. It is in the very next verse of Philippians 4.13. I know from our Bible study groups a couple years ago that this is a favorite verse of Ray Bodie's, and there is at least one other person at Creekside who regularly signs text messages off with 4.13. So it's a little risky to base a whole theological concept on a single verse. So I wanted to give you a little bit more context for you. And I looked it up in several different translations. And I want you to hear uh, sort of the progression that happens through these translations. First one is from the King James Version. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. The New King James says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The New Testament for everyone says, I have strength for everything in the one who gives me power. And the message paraphrase says, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. And finally, from the Living Bible, I can do everything God asks me to with the help of Christ who gives me the strength and power. Now, my concern about a verse like Philippians 4.13 is that taken out of context, it sounds like we could do whatever we want and Christ will provide us with superpowers like being able to leap a tall building in a single bound. But of course, Paul is writing this from prison. And if that were true, that would not make any sense at all. He could just bend the bars of the prison and slide out the window or make himself teeny tiny and just walk out of there. So it cannot mean that we can do whatever we want and Christ will give us the power. Because not only is that terrible theology, it isn't true. If we look around in our lives and, our, and with people we know, people we love, ourselves, people die of cancer, people whom we love, we have to watch them suffer with that. It cannot be true that we can do whatever we want. Natural disasters, accidents happen and leave us powerless and grieving. Our actions and our inactions might contribute to those things, but I do not believe that God sends disasters or natural disasters to teach us a lesson or punish us. Here's what God does give us, gratitude. It is a superpower, but not in the conventional sense. Gratitude is the realization that through Christ, we have the strength to get through anything life sends us, whatever God asks of us. 
every single person over the age of about two years old has experienced that things didn't go like we expected. That despite our most fervent wishes and efforts, the universe has not been arranged for our convenience according to our plans. Gratitude and maturity begin when we realize that we have to adapt and change and we can still be content. This is the secret which Paul discovered in a Roman prison. He had to have been poor and hungry and alone. And this is the place where he realizes that he can rejoice in the Lord always and he can get through anything with Christ's strength, even being poor and hungry and alone. Now, I have wondered, especially when I have come to this passage feeling battered and bruised, if Paul was actually feeling joy and contentment in prison, in prison or if he wrote this just because he knew it's the way that he ought to feel. And here's what I have decided. First of all, it's impossible to determine that. And second of all, it doesn't really matter. The, gra the test of gratitude is not when we're sitting in a warm home, surrounded by people we love, preparing to eat more food than we ought to. The test of gratitude is to take an experience when we are cold and hungry and at the end of our resources and to believe that by the grace of God, we will make it through. That strength may come from people and places that we do not expect, but that is the work of Christ and not our own power. And sometimes just knowing that we ought to believe that and acting like we believe that even when we don't feel that way is the first step to that power and grace becoming a reality which we can acknowledge with gratitude. At our congregational meeting last Sunday, Ron Nicodemus, our board chair, presented me with a Wonder Woman outfit. I don't think I will ever be able to fit in that outfit, especially not with Thanksgiving around the corner, but I do have a superpower. Instead of Wonder Woman, I pray that I will be 413 woman taking the power of Christ to this congregation and our community to do whatever God asks us. I hope that you will join me because with great power comes great gratitude. Amen. <laughs>